Welcome to Who's Who of Asian Americans in Houston. I'm your host, Jimmy Ma. It's a privilege today to have a special guest in the studio with us today, Ben Tran. Hi, Jimmy. Thank you for having me. Hello, Houston. How are you today? Ben, it's our pleasure. Uh, you are very well known in the community. You've given a lot of your time and your resources to help the community. Uh, but a lot of people probably know about your background, but I want our audience to kind of hear from, from yourself about how you ended up in Houston and, and your amazing journey to sit here to talk to us about that. You know, my journey to America has really set the basis of who I would become. A lot of my views comes from where I came from. Uh, my family and I got out of Vietnam on the very last day of the war, in April 30th, 1975. We got out um, when most people were not able to. And the only reason we were able to get out was because of coincidence on top of coincidence on top of coincidence. Any which of those coincidences not happening, I would still be in the communist regime country, in a third world country. Uh, um, and instead, we were able to make it to America, uh, have an amazing life here. Uh, and when you recognize the difference between those simple coincidences not happening or whether they happen or not and how different your life would be, you appreciate it. You appreciate the fact that you got to be one of those few people that were able to come to the, uh, the land of opportunity um, and, and, and escape the communist regime and the difference it makes in your life. Now, you ended up here in Ohio first. Um, and you have siblings and your parents were both here. Uh, they had to make ends meet. Could you tell us how did they end up be putting you guys through school? Because you all three of you went to very good schools. Well, when we first got to uh, the refugee camp in uh, Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania, we stayed in a refugee camp. Uh, we, had, we had actually uh, been picked up in the Pacific Ocean um, by a U.S. aircraft carrier um, and given the opportunity to go to France or go to America. Now, we have some uh, familiarity with the French culture because French had dominated Vietnam for a long time. But of course, my family, my mother, my father said, no way, we're going to America. And, you know, we really didn't know a whole lot about America. Um, and still, but the one thing you do know is that it's a land of opportunity. And my parents knew that that was where they were going to have the best shot of giving their kids a better life. And so we came to America and stayed in the refugee camp. Um, and you stay there until you get sponsored by, by somebody that will help you learn the ways, get around society, get a job, get a driver's license, these kind of things that everyday, everyday little things that most people take for granted to a foreigner in a third world country, it's extremely difficult and uh, it can be extremely confusing, um, yet fundamental to how you uh, succeed in, in, in this new country. Um, a Lutheran church sponsored us uh, in, from Columbus, Ohio, and that's why we went to Columbus, Ohio. And these are people that were not wealthy. We're talking about middle income, blue collar, low, lower income people that were already stretching their dollar to take care of their own families, opening up their homes, their wallets, their hearts to strangers. Uh, not just strangers, but strangers coming from a country that we just fought a war against. Um, and because of that kindness uh, and because America allowed us to come to this country and we met such kind, compassionate people once we got here, um, my family has been able to do so many amazing things. As you mentioned earlier, you know, my, my old eldest sister went to Cornell Law School. Uh, my second sister went to Columbia. I got her PhD at Columbia. I was able to get, obtain a Duke Law, Law degree. All this would not have been possible if America hadn't given us the opportunity uh, to do these things and strangers along the way that sometimes could ill afford to, take, to, to help us out, helped us out. And so I'm always cognizant of the fact that everything that, that, that people congratulate me for, and, and it's very kind, and, and, but it's not my accomplishment, certainly not my accomplishment alone. It's the accomplishment of a country that takes in people uh, from, other country, uh, from other countries as a shining beacon of freedom and, and, and an opportunity all around the world. And then you've got strangers with kind hearts, just the American people. And that's very generous of you to say that, but it also shows the true roots because your family achieved the American dream, but yet you don't, you didn't forget your roots and how to give back because you knew the kindness and generosity of others uh, helped you get to today. And, and that also shows, shows about what you do currently. You, you host a lot of events for charities. You give so much time to this community. Houston is a city that is full of diversity. And you are basically, you are a Houstonian. Uh, you've been here 
most of your life. This is your, your roots. Your career started here. Um, you worked for a very well-known corporate law firm. Could you tell us about that? Sure. Well, uh, you know, going back to um, how we even got to Houston in the first place, the reason why uh, Houston, uh, well, why we came to Houston was because my parents uh, had been working up in Columbus, Ohio. My dad was cleaning U-Haul trucks, and my mother was a uh, was a waitress at, at the Sears cafeteria. And they got uh, word that the 7-Eleven stores were expanding all over Houston and, and were allowing people to uh, uh, have a lot of job opportunity. And a 7-Eleven store typically requires five people working full time in order to run it because it's open seven days a week, right. 24 hours a day. My parents took on, my mom and dad took on a 7-Eleven store by themselves two people working seven days a week, 24 hours a day. My mom worked the day shift, my dad worked the night shift uh, and ran the store by themselves in order to keep that extra income uh, in order to save up. So you take that opportunity, that just that seed of opportunity. Um, and so, you know, they came down, they packed everything we owned into a little white pacer. Uh, the three, three kids and, and, and parents drove down to Houston. Uh, they started working at the 7-Eleven store. Uh, fast forward many years later, uh, three kids, you know, uh, uh, graduate degrees, uh, home, comfortable life, and that is the epitome of of, of the diversity and the, and the power of the city of Houston. Uh, to 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 start at a 7-Eleven store and end up putting three kids through very expensive schools, um, that tells you how 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 great the city of Houston is uh, and how much opportunity is there. Yeah. But it's still because your parents' grit and hard work got you. And, and your family to where they are, and you've 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 uh, inherited that that uh, work ethic, because I know that you work a lot, uh, whether it's on your own career or your or your charities or your the, the points they're interested in. You always give 110 percent, and that also represents the culture of the city. Is that we're a blue collar, hardworking city that anybody can make it, that anybody has a chance if given the right opportunity. And that's what you always tell tell us that uh, you want to be able to give the next generation the same opportunity. Now. Once you end up in Houston, it's very unique to me that uh, for a lot of us, we see our children, uh, once they go to a, a prestigious Ivy League school, uh, obtain a professional degree, and have a very stable and high income career. What made you go from corporate attorney and take the risk to do what you do today? Um, so I uh, started my law legal career at Fulbright and Jaworski, and I was a corporate uh, litigator, uh, mostly oil and gas work um, uh, as a trial attorney. And, uh, you know, it was a very comfortable living, very prestigious career, uh, fantastic, made a lot of great connections, got great training, um, and continued to practice law for, for, for 12 years. Along the way, you, I was always interested in being civically active, politically active, uh, uh, philanthropically active, just trying to find ways to give back because, as I said, that was the basis. It, it became co the core. Of, of me and my family because we were so grateful for everything that that, uh, that we had in getting to come over here and all the people that have helped us along the way. So all along the way, that had always been the case. Um, but I think somewhere somewhere in the seed of most people, there's some entrepreneurial spirit and some desire to be your own boss, uh, you know, and, and, and to create something. We're all creative creatures. We want to create something. And again, a testament to the city of Houston is that you can go start a business. Uh, you know, uh, I opened up Hughes Hanger, a uh, restaurant, uh, lounge, venue space, uh, and just was fortunate enough to, to do phenomenally well, um, such that I was actually uh, actually left the, uh, the legal career and have now opened uh, two other venues and working on a fourth venue now. Um, but that is, again, a testament to the vibrancy of the city of Houston, uh, that if you have a good product, if you have some good ideas, you can take a risk and do very well and become your own boss. See, you, you don't fit in that square image of what a Asian American immigrant uh, success story is. You, you, you got out of the box and you thought out of the box. You invested in the right people, you invested in yourself, and you're now a nighttime, nightlife and entertainment mogul because your enterprises are not just well known in Houston, but they're nationally known. Um, it, it's, it, it's not just a lounge and a restaurant, sure. it's a huge event space that, that could cater to a variety of events. And your, your new ventures are also very, very uh, successful right, as, right now. Well, you know, we, we've uh, hosted the mayor, um, so many major candidates, fundraisers for judges, congressmen, senators, uh, all those things. We've, you know, uh, helped raise approximately $2 million uh, in the last, you know, five years uh, at Hughes Hanger for charity and doing charity events. And these are the kind of things that 
um, go above and beyond what a typical restaurant and bar uh, can do. Um, you know, we've been able to do a lot of important things there. And I think that's, that's, that's one of my favorite things about this particular industry is that when you find a cause that you believe in, you can do a lot to help that cause uh, just by hosting an event there, broadcasting it to your many followers, and, uh, and raising recognition for that. That's right. You've been active in the uh, local and national political landscape for probably over a decade. Mm -hmm. That's very impressive because uh, at a very young age, you've accomplished a lot but you still remember the gift back, like you said, because you remember the opportunity you were given. Tell us a little bit about uh, uh, what you view the political landscape as and what have you done for the, for the local community? Well, what we, what we always wanted to do, um, at, you know, starting probably about my late 20s, I started becoming more politically active. And, and a lot of it was to try to get a young community. The Vietnamese community is a pretty young community here in America. I think most people came over in 75 or after. Uh, but it's a big community, and, and, and there's a lot of hesitancy within the community to get involved in politics and, and, and be more civic-minded because of, you know they're trying to succeed, they're trying to put their kids through college and things, things of that nature, and that's very understandable. But at the same time, I think we have an obligation. The same country that gave us all these opportunities is uh, the same country that, that requires our civic particip participation. So it's not just a matter of, okay, well, we've, gotten, we've been given some opportunities, let's make the best of it, but let's make the best of it, but also give back. Let's do our share in participating in, 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 in our community, in our country, in our state, in our city, um, to give back, um, but also to provide our, our unique voice. You know, we have a unique culture, we have a unique history, we have a unique perspective, and, and I think that a melting pot like Houston can only be uh, improved by all these unique voices, these unique uh, uh, perspectives come in, and it's only going to make Houston better. And to, to, to achieve the American dream together, you want to give them the opportunity to do what you have done. Uh, but I, I'll quickly go through a very short but impressive list of what you've done uh, for the local political landscape. You are, uh, you've been the uh, president of Asian American Democrats of Texas for three years. You sit on a variety of uh, different advisory boards, uh, numerous national, statewide, uh, local candidates, and elected officials. And you were already appointed to a position in a Mayor Bill White administration. And you also serve as the Harris County Democratic Party's liaison for Asia Media. You've done quite a bit of work. You know, it's, 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 um, politics is something that you have to have in your blood to some extent to really enjoy it and really... Um, uh, the, the, you know, it's a service. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, it's not just something you enjoy. It's also really an obligation. I truly do believe that. I really do believe that we have to take our place at the table and help make this city the best that we can, make this state the best that we can. And so I think a lot of times um, young professionals in, 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 in our community will forget that. And, and you know, they're understandably uh, very focused on you know, having a great career and, and, and all that. But you know, being a great artist or being a great uh, architect or whatever is one aspect of someone's life. I think being a great um, citizen is something that, that people should, should take seriously also. Then we're going to take a very short break. I want to delve into what you just mentioned and also continue this amazing journey, uh, letting your story be known to other Houstonians. We'll take a short break. Welcome back to Who's Who of Asian Americans in Houston. I'm your host, Jimmy Ma, and we have Ben Tran in the studio with us today. Good to be back, Jimmy. Ben, uh, before the break, we're talking about a uh, very unique for Asians is that part of the Asian immigrant culture is to do well in school, uh, have a good white collar career, and raise a family, uh, but mostly not as much civic minded as we should be. But you take a different stance. You believe in giving back to the community. You believe in, in service. Now tell us how that came about. Well, there, there are two sides of, of uh, public service and civic duty. Um, one is an obligation, uh, simply because we're citizens. Uh, here we are uh, succeeding and getting uh, reaping a lot of benefits from being in an amazing city, an amazing state, an amazing country. Um, we have to give back. Uh, there are people that need our help. There are people. Uh, that need our input. Again, the unique perspective that each community brings to the main table is going to make that table richer. And so, you know, on one side of the coin, there's that obligation. On the other side, it's also very beneficial. Whenever you organize and work together 
and as opposed to just the community kind of you know having no uh, uh, defined shape. Uh, when you start taking stances, uh, you, you're going to get a lot more attention from elected officials. You're going to get a lot more attention from candidates that care about what's happening in the community because you're working together and raising your voices together. And as you start forming voting blocks, as you start um, um, raising money and being more active in, 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 the, in the political system, you're going to get see a return to your community uh, with the elected officials uh, addressing issues that are of a concern to your community, to the things, that, things that are important to you, your family, uh, and, and people like you. This helps maybe the next generation. No, it will help the next generation. It will help a lot of the new immigrants also. But being a public service does not benefit you personally. There's no glory or financial benefits. As a matter of fact, you're going to put up a lot of your personal time to help others. But this goes back to what you said earlier about being thankful, um, having faith, and giving back. Because having a unified voice is important, not just for the Asian community specifically, it's for all of Estonians to have the voters, the taxpayers, to have their voice and concerns heard. Um, but public service means different, thing, uh, means different things to different people. In your mind, what do you think of public service? Well, public service, I think the key word uh, to being a public servant is the servant part, uh, part of it. Because you have to be doing it for the right reasons. Um, if you are in it for profit or for glory or prestige, then you're, you shouldn't be running in the first place because these are positions that you have all these people in a city or in a state or in a country that are, that are voting for you because they, they're trusting in you to be one of their representatives. And that trust is something that you shouldn't betray for selfish reasons. And so a lot of these uh, 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 candidates that are out there you know, looking after only their best interests or special interests and things of that nature, I'm completely against that because really that's a betrayal of not just your position, but we try the community that, that you represent. You really have to be doing it for the right reasons, and the, that reason can, should simply be to make your community a better place. Now, you've always talked about uh, investment in people, and, and how does that relate to your viewpoints on perhaps public service or uh, crime or, or the society in general, investment in people? Well, uh, my family is a great example of what happens when you invest in people. Um, this country led us into the country, uh, like I said, strangers helped us along the way. And because of that, uh, my family has paid millions of dollars in taxes back into the system. We have employed so many people. I, by, I, I by myself employ over 50 uh, employees, all of which then they pay taxes. And along the way, you're doing all kinds of charity events and you're giving back to the community through taxes, through employing others, through starting small businesses. Uh, um, and all these things uh, lead to a stronger economic growth in the community. Um, and so the investment early on of just a little bit of money um, can lead to great rewards. Your ROI, the return on your investment on that can be huge if you do it as an investment. Um, and people need to recognize that. People need to recognize that giveaways are sometimes not giveaways, but they're investments. Uh, a, a great example is education. Uh, you give a child an opportunity to go to uh, college, they're much less likely to commit crimes. They're much less likely to end up in prison. And if that's the case, you can compare uh, the cost of paying for a kid's tuition versus paying for having them incarcerated uh, later on down the road. Uh, if they have an education, they get to make more money uh, pay more money back and uh, pay more taxes back into the system, uh, employ other people, and so forth and so forth, as opposed to then, as opposed to being in, in, incarcerated and we have to pay, you know, so much money to, you know, keep them incarcerated each and every year. And so what it is, is it's an economic, it's, it really is, it's not just a moral thing to, to give people an opportunity, but it's an economic uh, advantage to do so when you're investing in them. Uh, and giving them the opportunity. So your solution to crime and poverty issues is through education, through investment in education for the next generation so that they have the opportunity to get out of their current surroundings. Uh, I, I, I get what you're saying because if I grew up in a, in a low-income area and a crime-invested neighborhood, then it's very difficult to, to think about college because it's a dream. Because unless you've live that life, lifestyle, growing up. Because you grew up like that. You grew up without a, a, a support system. You grew up with just new immigrants with, without knowing anyone. Your parents had to work hard to get there. But you made it because you knew that some, there was people that along the way that helped you. But a lot of these kids that 
they didn't have anyone to help them. And also, they did not know how to get to college. So to them, it's just a pipe dream, and they end up uh, perhaps crime or poverty becomes a, a repetitive cycle. So what you're saying is education investment in people, a small donation uh, helps a, a ripple effect met for many generations down the road. So you have a child that for some kids, the idea of going to college is as big of a pipe dream as playing in the NBA or becoming a Hollywood uh, movie star. And whenever college uh, is that far of a possibility from you, you're focusing on other things. And unfortunately, those other things often come in the way of crime and, and, and finding ways, other ways to make the money that you want and the money that you need. And so, uh, again, that child, instead of, if you give them the opportunity to go to college instead of uh, going to prison, that child then goes on, gives some valuable service to society, pays taxes, perhaps employs other people, gives back to the um, community instead of continuing to take from the community by having to be incarcerated. Um, and it causes a ripple effect. Everybody that you help, when you invest in somebody, you're not just, hel you're not just helping them, but everyone that they in turn are able to help. And that ripple effect keeps going and keeps going. So the people in Ohio, uh, the Lutheran Church in Ohio, that helped me and my family, Everything that I've been able to do since then, everyone that I've been able to help since then, is because they helped us in the first place. And so all this, um, all, all this good kindness and compassion that comes from what I've been able to do is also sitting on their shoulders also because of, of what they did for us. It's basically paying it forward, the ripple effect. And, and your compassion and, and your generosity is felt. Uh, we're so glad that you are a Estonian. And we look forward to many good things to come from, from Ben Tran. I appreciate you very much. Thank you, Jim. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you for tuning in to Who's School of Asian Americans in Houston. Have a good night.